Well, here we go then. Here is the third of our types of delegated legislation video. And in this instance, we're going to look at the bylaw. And um, the, the, by the, well, the easiest way to start that, I suppose, is to look at the three different types by way of reinforcement. If we think the first one was an ordering council, and an ordering council, if you remember, was made by or drawn up by the Privy Council, and they are normally used for emergency delegated legislation. The second was statutory instruments, and statutory instruments were made by government ministers, and they generally dealt with detail. They put technical detail onto the bones of a parent act. The third one that we're going to look at is the bylaw, and that's what this video is going to be um, talking all about. And bylaws are all about geographic detail. They're all about specific laws for specific areas. And the before we can look at that in any great depth, we have to talk about the concept of local authorities. So bylaws are made by local authorities and public corporations. I'm going to return to public corporations at the end. They are an odd anomaly, and I have to say most people forget to put them in their answers. So when I come, when we come to look at that at the end, I'll talk in great depth about that. But we're going to talk about the local authority first. And local authorities make laws that apply in their own geographic area. And local authorities are hierarchical. I've used Suffolk here, but as you can see, there is a Suffolk County Council. And Suffolk County Council will make laws that apply to the entire county. Suffolk also has a mid-Suffolk district. And that will make laws that apply to the district area around mid-Suffolk. and that is below the county council in the hierarchy. Below Mid-Suffolk district in the hierarchy is Ipswich Borough Council. So laws made by Ipswich Borough Council will apply only to Ipswich Borough. And right down at the bottom of the pile, well, not quite at the bottom of the pile, actually, is you've got um, here, I've used Brandon. Brandon is a small town um, in Suffolk. So that's going to be the town council. Now, if we wanted to go even lower, we could go to parish councils. But each of these are lower in a hierarchy. Suffolk County Council will make laws, will make bylaws that apply to the whole county of Suffolk. Mid Suffolk District will make laws, bylaws that apply to the district of Mid Suffolk. Ipswich Borough Council will make bylaws that apply to the borough of Ipswich only. And Brandon Town Council will make bylaws that apply to the town of Brandon only. So you can see that the local authority will make laws that apply in their own geographic area. All right. So, and those examples of those laws could be things like drinking in public. So those of you that um, spend any time in small local towns might see bylaws that talk about not being able to drink outside of public houses or might talk about the times that you can drink in public places. Similarly so, they also make laws that talk about dog fouling. We're going to unfortunately talk about dog fouling at great length um, when we look at specific types of bylaws. Um, it seems to be an easy one to remember. They're not the only two. There are loads and loads and loads of bylaws, um, but they're just two that are accessible for us. And there are a couple of rules about bylaws. The first is, is that they must be confirmed by the relevant minister. OK, so in order, before a bylaw can become law, they have to be confirmed by the relevant minister. 
We'll discuss that more when we look at the video that deals with controls on, on delegated legislation. This happy chappy here, larger than life in a number of um, in a number of ways, is Eric Pickles. And Eric Pickles is the local government minister. And he will be responsible for confirming a great number of bylaws. And the second thing to say is that they are enforceable in the courts. If you, or return to dog fouling, if you were to allow your dog to foul in public against the rules of a bylaw, that action, your dog fouling, or failing to clear it up actually, are, is going to be enforceable in a court. Generally, in that case, it's going to be the magistrate's court. So bylaws form a law in the same way that any other law is, is found, which can be enforced in any one of the courts. So we're going to look at some examples of bylaws. And as I said, we're going to come back to um, dog fouling. You will notice these sorts of signs everywhere, and they will be signs that will pertain to particular bylaws. Now, like all things, all delegated legislation, you need a Parent Act or an Enabling Act. In the case of dog fouling, the Parent Act is the Clean Neighbourhoods and Environment Act of 2005. That's the Parent Act. Now that's changed recently. Um, don't be mistaken, it used to be the Dogs Fouling of Land Act 1996. That has been superseded and updated and the new Parent Act is the Clean Neighbourhoods and Environment Act 2005. Don't use the old one. You can see here that that means it, the, the Clean Neighbourhoods and Environment Act, what that does is it, in that a council can designate land as what's known as a poop scoop area. And if you don't pick up what your dog has left, you can be fined. Now, in order for that to become law, the local council, whichever council it's going to be, has to create a bylaw. So the Clean Neighbourhoods and Environment Act 2005 allows councils to create bylaws to, in this instance, deal with dog fouling. Here I've got a screenshot of the fouling of land of dogs, sorry, the fouling of land by dogs, Wiltshire Council Order 2012. So you can see this is a bylaw that has been created by Wiltshire Council and that is made under the Clean Neighbourhoods and Environment Act 2005. So that says that the Parent Act has allowed Wiltshire Council to create the fouling of land by dogs Wiltshire Council Order 2012. So that's in an example of a Parent Act and a bylaw that deals with dog fouling in a particular council area. Most bylaws will be made under the authority of the Local Government Act. That will tell, and there are lots and lots of um, sections in the Local Government Act, which says what local councils can do, what bylaws they can make. Good examples of this will be those that we've already discussed. Things like drinking or skateboarding and cycling. I think I spelled that right, skateboarding and cycling. Most of these are punishable with a fine. Okay, so you'll end up, if you breach a bylaw, you'll probably end up in, in court, normally magistrate's court, and um, that will end up, if you are found guilty, with a fine. And then most of them are normally displayed on lampposts. Um, around the local area and if you know that you are aware of bylaws if you walk around you will see lots of bylaw signs all around the towns that you visit and you walk around and the final thing that I mentioned at the beginning that I want to talk about is this idea that bylaws can be made by public bodies and the most famous one of those the most obvious one of these are um, public bodies or corporations might be the train companies. Now the Railways Act, and we looked at the Railways Act and we looked at statutory instruments, but the Railways Act 1993 allow railway companies to make law. 
Now, if you've traveled on a train, you may have seen this sign, for instance. It's normally by the doors. And it says, stop, do you have a valid ticket? And if you look here at the very bottom, it will say, by law 18, says that any person who breaches railway bylaws commits a criminal offence and shall be liable upon conviction to a fine of £1,000. Now that discusses bylaw 18, but bylaw 18 will be made by the railway company under the Railways Act 1993. And the famous case that you get to throw at this answer is Boddington versus British Transport Police, 1998. Obviously, it's not about beer. Um, I've just put that up because it's an easy way of remembering it, the old Boddington's beer trademark. But Boddington's versus British Transport Police was a case in which a man was fined for smoking on a train. So it's a smoking case. And the idea is, or the, the, the background to this case, is that the British Transport Police dealt with a man who was then eventually fined for smoking on a train. He took, he took that on appeal to say that there was no authority for the British Transport Police and the railway company to create a bylaw which allowed or which stopped him or prevented him for smoke from smoking. And the courts decided that the bylaw was absolutely in force and that the British Transport Police could enforce that bylaw on a train. So Boddington versus British Transport Police allows a public body or a corporation to create bylaws to which people have to then um, uh, uh, um, abide by. So Boddington versus British Transport Police is a smoking case in which the British Transport Police um, fine them, well they don't, the court finds a man, but they, they um, process a man for smoking on a train. He challenges that and the courts make it very clear that the um, train corporation can create a bylaw which is valid law. And that's it. It's relatively straightforward. Bylaws are created by local authorities um, public corporations to deal with the geographic specialities of a particular area. And the rationale behind that is that these areas know their districts better than Parliament do, and therefore it makes sense that these districts make laws that apply to that geographical area. And the different geographical areas the different geographical local authorities will apply laws that deal with those specific areas. A county council for a county, district for the district, borough for the local borough and town for the local town. They have to be confirmed by the relevant ministers, the relevant minister, and they are then enforceable in the court. One key example that we've looked at very clearly is dog fouling. And dog, the parent act that deals with dog fouling is the Clean Neighbourhoods and Environment Act 2005. And that allows a council to create an order which stops people or which makes sure that people have to pick up dog mess after their dogs have done that. And a great number of these are then also created under the Local, environment, uh, Local Government Act. And finally, we looked at this idea that public bodies could also create, um, in certain circumstances, could also create bylaws. And we looked specifically at the railway companies who, under the Railways Act, could create bylaws. And this one is for valid tickets, but there are also bylaws for smoking um, and pulling the rip cord and those sorts, of, you know, the, the, the fast stop cord on a train. And that's it. Make sure you get all of those factors in if you are answering a question on bylaws and you are guaranteed to score um, top marks.